now, a 23 ABC in-depth report, the Kern County Manhunt. I've never seen a larger search. I got a sign hanging out, and if he's looking, it says, is there life after death? Trespass, find out. I was like, this lunatic's really gonna kill me right now. He said, bam, 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 all you guys can be in heaven right now. How on earth can someone do something like this to another human being? We, we assume he's still armed and he's still extremely dangerous. Just came in, got some uh, food and whatnot. Seemed like the guy that was on the newspaper. The officers in this department were relent relentless to find this, this guy. A mystery in the mountains finally comes to a violent end in the desert with more questions than answers about the man who eluded authorities for 18 days. Good evening, I'm Tim Callahan. And I'm Jackie Parks. And tonight, 23 ABC News takes an in-depth look back at the manhunt that kept our mountain communities on edge for nearly three weeks. It was a situation the Kern County Sheriff recognized as a nightmare scenario, a search that would end up requiring hundreds of law enforcement personnel dedicating thousands of hours, all in an effort to find one man, Benjamin Peter Ashley, who was determined to get away. And it all started in the mountain in a cabin near Twin Oaks. Three men taken hostage there by a man believed to be a squatter. Tonight, we present these stories to you as we did as they unfolded weeks ago. 23 ABC's James Johnson begins our timeline. The incident happened Tuesday night, 15 miles southeast of Twin Oaks. The Sheriff's Department received a call of a possible kidnapping happening in the area. Three victims, uh, three young men, he had arrived at a cabin that was owned by the family of one of the victims. Now this is a very uh, rural, uh, rugged area. It's very rugged terrain, uh, difficult to access. As the three young men approached the cabin, a man came out asking the trio what they were doing on his property. The one victim whose family owns the cabin uh, told him, you know, basically, uh, this isn't your property. It's it's this property belongs to me and my family. And at that point, the suspect brandished a shotgun and ordered the three victims into the cabin. The gunman would hold the men hostage for over an hour, making threats to kill them. The suspect would then take off in one of the victims' vehicles. At one point, the suspect left the cabin carrying a shotgun with the shotgun on foot, and the three victims were able to get out of the cabin and then make their way away from the cabin, away from the suspect. The suspect is described to be Caucasian, between 30 to 35 years old, 160 pounds with brown hair and blue eyes. The victims would make their way to the Twin Oaks General Store and call for help. Give us a call if you think you see this person. This is obviously somebody we would consider dangerous and uh, we would like to locate this person as, as quick as possible and get this person into custody. James Johnson, 23 ABC News. And after that incident happened, sheriff's deputies were on the lookout for a man matching the description of the kidnapper. And mountain residents were warned that he might seek refuge in another cabin, which he did three days later. This is what 23 ABC's Cassie Carlisle reported the day Ashley's latest victim was found. It's been a busy day for SWAT sheriff's deputies and the off-highway vehicle team as they look for answers in a murder investigation. Last night around midnight, KCSO got a call of a man with a gunshot wound in a cabin about 25 miles back from Highway 14 and Jawbone Canyon Road. The caller said they were a family member of the man who died. SWAT was called in early this morning to investigate. They entered the cabin at around 9 a.m. and found the man. Sheriff's deputies shut down Jawbone Canyon around 7 a.m., but a few cars came out. One had a family that was at their cabin for the weekend. They just said SWAT was out there. They said they had no idea what was going on and were concerned when they learned the news. Another couple was camping last night when they saw several sheriff's cars drive by. They became concerned. On their way out, deputies checked their RV to look for clues. The only possible lead they're looking into relates to a kidnapping that happened a couple days ago about 10 miles away. We don't know if these two cases are connected or not. But that's a possibility that we're looking into. Cassie Carlisle, 23 ABC News. And that victim shot in the cabin was later identified as Tehachapi dentist Dr. David Markiewicz. His family later telling us the biggest tragedy of his death is that he would have been the first person to help someone in need if they only asked. And after Markiewicz's murder, the manhunt quickly escalated law enforcement desperate to find Benjamin Ashley before he could hurt or kill anyone else. His next victims would be those trying to hunt him down. 23 ABC's Stephen Hicks was in Weldon the day after two deputies were shot. 
Well, we're here at South Fork Elementary School, the staging site for all these different police agencies, and they're still continuing their search as they have throughout the morning, the day, and now into the evening for a man last seen 25 miles south of here. In the middle of the Mojave Desert, an officer warns residents of danger up ahead. Humvees replace police cars. Assault rifles replace handguns. All to try and find a man who shot at sheriff's deputies. Last night, a little after 8 o'clock, deputies and a Bakersfield police SWAT team were conducting a search for a suspect in rural outbuildings near the intersection of Jawbone Canyon and Kelso Valley Road. The suspect opened fire and deputies returned with shots of their own. Two deputies were hit, identified as 40-year-old Michael Booker and Jose Perez. A bullet just grazed Perez's ear. However, Booker had to be airlifted to Antelope Valley Hospital, now in stable condition. It is unknown whether the suspect was hit because he is still at large. He is yet unaccounted for. We're still actively searching the area. It's an approximately five mile search area. Due to the rugged and desolate surrounding terrain, police feel confident he is in that enclosed search area. This comes just days after SWAT teams found a man dead inside a cabin just a short distance from last night's shooting. Police suspect it is the same man who was described as a white male between 30 and 35 years old with long brown hair. Right now it's it's unconfirmed, but it is a close geographical area. Investigators are trying to connect the dots, but due to safety, have been unable to do so. The scene of the officer involved shooting is yet to be secured. So, so we have not actively had our detectives in to look at that evidence yet. While the Kern County Sheriff's Department is taking the lead on this investigation, a number of different agencies are also assisting, including the Ridgecrest and Bakersfield Police Departments. And this helicopter on loan from the L.A. County Sheriff's Office. Stephen Hicks, 23 ABC. Well, tracking a killer, deputies show the public an image of what they think Benjamin Ashley looks like. And a popular trail made famous by a Hollywood movie shut down as crews scour the mountains for their suspects. Hello there. Here I am again, inviting you to come and join us into another adventure. We just opened our new bar at La Costa Mariscos. Come and join us, experience for yourself what we have to offer to you. We continue in with our tradition and offering you fresh ingredients, good quality, and excellent service. Come and join us and experience for yourself. The biggest deals of the year are at the Bakersfield Hyundai Summer Clearance Event. Clearance pricing on our entire Hyundai lineup. Get up to 5000 in total savings. With more luxury, more technology, more safety. New Sonata is just eighteen nine With America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. That's the best in the business. A sale so big, it only happens once a year. The Summer Clearance Event. Rush to Bakersfield Hyundai now. A better way to buy a car. Hablamos su idioma. For a limited time, our 38th anniversary sale with our lowest payments ever advertised continues. Plus, we are marking down bedrooms, living rooms, and all motion furniture to new lower prices. Closeouts, overstocks, at new even lower prices. There's no interest until May 2021 with equal payments. It's a sale within a sale, and it's for a limited time only. Our lowest advertised payments in 38 years. The anniversary sale at more furniture for less. KERO is pleased to meet its obligation to work with local organizations involved in employment recruiting. Contact our Human Resources Department at 661-281-3656 about receiving notices of the station's full-time vacancies. We, the people of the San Joaquin Valley, pledge to protect our air and the health of our community. Make one change for cleaner air. We pledge to carpool to work and to school. And not idle our vehicles. We pledge to ride our bikes. I pledge to make a difference. Let's work together to clean our valley's air. Even small changes can help improve our air quality. When you take the pledge to protect our air, you're committing to a better future for our community. A message from the Valley Air District. Tonight, a strange romance. She gave up everything to marry him, a convicted serial killer on death row. Oscar Boland is the love of my life. And now, almost 20 years later, could she be the key to what sets him free? Tonight on an all-new 2020 on ABC. Download the 23 ABC News app today and get weather information and severe weather warnings pushed directly to your smartphone or tablet. 23 ABC News. We cover Kern County. 
days after the kidnapping and murder in the Kelso Valley, sheriff's deputies released this sketch, warning residents to be on the lookout for a man matching this description. Then more than a week later, a much different image of the suspect is revealed. We'll show you the transformation that may have changed the outcome of the investigation just a bit later. And with a swarm of law enforcement in rural Kern County, the Forest Service closes several popular hiking trails in the Paiute Mountains. That included the Pacific Crest Trail, a popular destination, especially following last year's film Wild, which featured the trail. And bow hunters also told to avoid the area days after the official start of deer hunting season. Authorities feared another run-in with an innocent victim. All hiking trails have since been reopened and hunting activity has resumed. Well, a week after David Markiewicz was murdered inside his cabin, an outpouring of support as we learned more about the man from Tehachapi. Few details are known why Mark Markiewicz was targeted, but his daughter said Ashley chose to kill a man who most likely would have tried to help him. 23 ABC's Laura Acevedo shows us how they were coping with his loss. Still in shock over the death of her father and the ongoing manhunt in Weldon, David Lewis Markiewicz's daughter remembered him today as someone who was always willing to help. My dad was the most wonderful man I could have known. There is, um, there is no one like my dad. Markiewicz would regularly visit the cabin in Weldon, but recently when his family didn't hear from him, they thought maybe he had fallen and hurt himself. Markiewicz was later found dead inside that cabin, KCSO looking for his killer ever since. It feels like I'm in a horrible movie. It feels like every day I'm saying my lines, like even this is so surreal. It's like you go about your everyday things because you need to. Kurt is thankful law enforcement has not given up on their search for this killer and are confident they will find him. But the fact that they are being relentless, that Sheriff Youngblood is determined to get this man, the amount of counties and the amount of forces that are out there right now blows me away. Dr. Markiewicz and his family lived in Tehachapi for much of his life, and his daughter says the community's support has been incredible. The support of meals and flowers and just cards and donations. Um, I know my dad's going to end up, they're going to do a scholarship fund for my dad um, in lieu of flowers at the service. Markiewicz is survived by his wife, his daughter, and two sons and their grandchildren. His services will be held on Sunday, August 23rd at 2 p.m. at Christian Life Assembly in Tehachapi. Laura Acevedo, 23 ABC. And when we come back, sheriffs get a break by finally identifying exactly who they are looking for and release a much different photo to the public. My thought was like, is he going to blow us up right now? And the young men who survived that encounter with Ashley in the mountain cabin talk about how they were barely able to escape with their lives. If you think all morning news is the same, take another look. This past week, Kern County students went back to school, and 23 ABC had team coverage with the latest school information. And the principal here is dealing with some unfortunate news this morning. We broke the news of overnight vandalism at a local high school. We're going to give it a grade of a B. And 23 ABC had your back to school forecast and traffic. Watch 23 ABC Morning News, your official back to school station. Tom posted. Dogs grew, car didn't. Hashtag Great Dane problems. Wow, how old are they? Eight months. You're gonna need a CRV, and you can find a great deal on one at the Honda Summer Clearance event. The CRV is Motor Trend's 2015 Sport Utility of the Year and a 2015 IIHS Top Safety Pick. Oh, he likes it. Perfect. Hurry in to the Honda Summer Clearance event for a great deal on your new Honda. Just like Danny, huh? They'll probably never know about his thousands of hours of on-the-job training. There you go, Daddy. Or that he spent as much time in the classroom as someone with a master's degree. You and I know he's one of the experts when it comes to electricity. Part of the IBEW team right here in Kern County, committed to doing the job right. They call him Dad. You call him the electrician right down the street. IBEW Local 428, serving Kern County for over 100 years. Papillomia Dental offers Invisalign, which is a uh, clear way of uh, straightening your teeth and giving you a better bite. It was the best investment I've ever made for my daughter's smile. 
I'm much more confident now that my teeth are getting straighter. The difference is obvious, Busy day, huh? Yep, our annual clearance event really brings them in. I can barely keep up by myself. Zero percent APR financing. Tons of amazing inventory. Only happens once a year. Hmm, hologram number 17 seems to have gone rogue. I'm the real Jan now. Zero percent, zero percent. Now get zero APR for 60 months plus a thousand bonus cash on any new 2015 Prius or lease a Prius C for just $179 a month. It's all yours. Thanks, Jan. Toyota, let's go places. Well, two weeks would pass until we learn the identity of the suspect, Benjamin Peter Ashley. A criminal with an extensive past living under the radar here in Kern County. 23 ABC's Stephen Hicks has that story. It was discovered today that we were able to identify our suspect. After two weeks of searching the vast Kelso Valley wilderness, investigators have finally been able to identify their suspect as Benjamin Peter Ashley. The 34-year-old has an extensive criminal history, having been arrested in L.A., Merced, and Yosemite. His most recent picture was taken after he was arrested in Bear Valley Springs on a warrant out of Glendale. We believe that he's still within our perimeter. But there is a possibility with all the movement and that we that uh, the deputies in the field have seen that at some point he could get out of our perimeter. After two weeks of searching with very little to show for it, the sheriff's office has been pressured to think about an exit strategy with the rising costs associated with the search. At this point, uh, that's not my focus. Uh, it may be really uh, in two or three weeks or whenever we have this guy in custody, but right now my job is, is uh, public safety. And in the surrounding Weldon and Lake Isabella area, residents are happy to hear that. I don't want a freaking psycho running around my area our area, you know, and with our kids and families. I think some of them are scared. Uh, from what I've seen, most of the people that never locked their doors are now locking their doors. Today's announcement does ease those fears somewhat and shows that the police are making progress. My name is one step closer to catching the guy. The more information we have about him, the more chances we have to grab him. I feel like there's now that everybody knows what he looks like, they'll be more on the lookout because everybody from here to, you know, everywhere knows about it. So they'll find him easier because everyone knows his face. And then Saturday, August 15th, the suspect that has eluded hundreds of search crews for 18 days walks into a mini mart in broad daylight to buy $100 worth of food. The unpredictable ending to one of Kern County's most bizarre manhunts. Once again, 23 ABC's Stephen Hicks. Just before 5 o'clock, the Sheriff's Department received a call that would spell the end of the Kelso Valley manhunt. Benjamin Peter Ashley, the man wanted for murder, kidnapping, and shooting two sheriff's deputies, was seen inside Brady's Mini Mart. Gary Welfel says he recognized him immediately. Just came in, got some uh, food and whatnot, and seemed like the guy that was on the newspaper. He said Ashley looked dirty, like he had been hiking for days, and made an odd purchase for someone trying to lay low. Yeah, he bought like $100 worth of junk food. His sister called police, and shortly after, deputies found him in the desert, just behind the market, with a firearm. We don't know yet whether he fired, uh, but both deputies fired, striking uh, the suspect and killing him. An autopsy has yet to be completed, but Sheriff Youngblood is convinced they have their man. I went back, and, and it, it looks just like him. Uh, he, he has a, a firearm. I'm, I'm convinced that's it. Last night, residents of the Onyx area were convinced Ashley was on this hill, but after searching all night, these tactical teams were unable to find him. Police say Ashley must have walked more than 30 miles to get here. When you're afraid and you're running, uh, you, can, you can cover a lot of ground. Um, so it did not surprise me to, to find him here, but it surprised me that he was able to uh, elude us for two weeks. And with the suspect dead, a sigh of relief for Kern County and some potential closure for victims and their families. This week, two of the men kidnapped by Ashley finally broke their silence. 23 ABC's Cassie Carlisle has their story. Just before sunset, these three men pulled up to a family cabin. As the sun went down, the nightmare began. What scared us the most is that the fact that the gun was a sawed-off. Benjamin Ashley came out armed with a shotgun and ordered them inside. He said, Bam, bam, bam. All you guys can be in heaven right now. The men said he started surrounding the house with propane tanks. My thought was like, is he going to blow us up right now? So the men started thinking of a plan. We should get water, a weapon, you know, some kind of something, you know, instead of going empty handed. Will Clyer told Ashley his parents were coming and said he could take the ATV. He even told him where to go. And Ashley listened. Will is gone. Will is out. And then John followed right behind him. Sparing no time to get to cover. He, he was coming. Like, he came back. But they weren't quick enough. He came from behind an upper hill. 
the first time, and we hid. We're in the creek beds already, so we hid. Like, I was looking up, and, like, you can see full facial structure, everything. Like, he was, like, you know, because he already went back to the cabin, so at that point, he knew we were gone. And then we're like, all right, we're not getting ground being in the creek bed. We need to get on the main road to be where we need to be at before sundown. An exhausting 15-mile hike led them to safety. As of right now, I'm a little jumpy, mm -hmm. but, and don't mess with me. <laughs> but other than that, you know, just, just grateful. Very grateful. Well, now that it's all over, what did we learn and what could be done differently if this ever happens again? Just some of the questions we asked the sheriff is look back and look ahead next. With Empire Today's new half-price sale, our best sale. Get beautiful floors and professional installation for half-price. That's carpet with installation, half-price. Hardwood with installation, half-price. Tile or vinyl plus installation, half-price. And laminate with installation, half-price. That's half-price for your whole project. Floors and professional installation. It's Empire's new half-price sale. Schedule now. 800-588-2300, Empire. Today. I need to look for a used car, but I just keep putting it off. It's daunting. What if I make the wrong choice? It's like if I buy a t-shirt, then change my mind, I can return it. But a car, you don't really know until you've driven it a few days. I just want to be sure. As long as people drive cars, CarMax will be the best way to buy them. Neighbor? Neighbor? You going solar? Yep. Does this mean you're going to start wearing hemp shirts now? Mm. You're going to get a little tattoo of a peace symbol on your ankle? No. It's that wafting over. I'm getting something really strong. Huh. It's like the smell of Mother Earth and snuggling. You're a funny man. It means I'm going to save 20% on my electric bill with Sunrun. But I am wearing a new scent. Can you smell that? That's money. I smell like money. Nice. It's, it's a nice scent. 23 ABC, first when the manhunt ended. First online and on the scene, proving again why more people turned to 23. First with the announcement, it was over. I'm, I'm convinced it's over. First with push alerts and social media updates, and first online at turnto23.com. We just received an email into the 23 ABC newsroom. The coroner's office has confirmed the sheriffs do have their man. The only station with breaking news on weekend mornings. First, the most complete. That's how 23 ABC covers Kern County. Right now, thousands in the Bakersfield region are living with chronic back and neck pain and can't find a solution. They don't want prescription pain medications. They don't want surgery. But all that changes because now there's Invista Medical. Invista Medical offers a full team of medical specialists and breakthrough technologies to get to the source of your back and neck pain and provide true long-term relief. And we offer a free consultation to see if our innovative approach is right for you and your back pain. Call Invista Medical, Bakersfield's leader in back and neck pain relief. Upgrade to the improved 23 ABC smartphone and tablet app. One of the primary faces of this manhunt was Sheriff Donnie Youngblood. And 23 ABC's Cassie Carlisle sat down and found out how a sheriff responds to such a crisis. As I recall, we were at the at the museum with uh, Merle Haggard. Day one of the manhunt started off personally for the sheriff. Two of the three uh, people that were involved in the kidnapping were uh, someone that I knew. He was thankful when they escaped and thought that was the end of it. But the manhunt would drag on for 18 days, eventually involving hundreds of boots on the ground from dozens of agencies. I've never seen a manhunt this size. Uh, we've been involved in manhunts that have gone all over the country, all over LA. Youngblood saw a nightmare play out in front of him. I think that we were prepared to catch him in the first two or three days. That was. Uh, uh, that's what we do. Nobody eludes us. We have, uh, we had the, the best equipment available. We had the best men and women available. Uh, and then when we got mutual aid, I was, I was quite certain that we would have him in two or three days. And then as it went on, uh, it, it became a little bit surprising that he was able to elude us. With cabins in the woods, caves and mines throughout the desert, and the heat, it started to wear on the team. As the sheriff, you, you have just a, a lot of empty for 
your staff that's out there in that 100 plus degree temperature walking in the, the most obnoxious terrain you can imagine. While he wasn't out there every day, his mind was on the mission. You do that on every case, every yeah. big case. You, you try and think like they do and what they might uh, do and, and uh, where they might go. Identifying Benjamin Ashley gave the sheriff solace knowing he wasn't a violent person. There was kind of a pattern of um, that reassured me he gets arrested every year somewhere that he's going to show up. But the, the fearful part is what's going to happen during that year if we don't catch him. The sheriff said Ashley had a strained relationship with family members from Sunland and didn't wish to talk about it further. When it came to tracking Ashley. If you look at from beginning to end, we're talking about 65 miles of, of travel. The sheriff said he underestimated Ashley, saying someone who lives in this terrain has a definite advantage, though KCSO's advantage was in numbers. The community was so, so supportive. We They, they brought food. Uh, they offered their homes uh, for places to stay. Uh, it was really, really encouraging. And it's those relationships that has young blood believing when or if there's another search like this, They'll be ready. You know, I couldn't be prouder of the job that, that they, they've all done. Cassie Carlisle, 23 ABC News. So what happens from here? While the suspect may be dead, the story continues. Sheriff Youngblood and the County Board of Supervisors are working to determine just how much the manhunt cost. The final moments, including the deputy-involved shooting, are still under investigation. And what about the suspect's motive? Crews may never know why Ashley committed these crimes. And finally, Dr. David Markiewicz will be remembered by friends and family at a ceremony on Sunday. And be sure to continue to stay with 23ABC for the very latest updates on this story on our Facebook page, also on our website at turntotwenty23.com. That's where you can get a history of this investigation and you can also get the latest information on our free 23ABC mobile and tablet apps. And when you're on that website, you're going to see all the reporters' stories and it really is an inside glimpse to just how much resources, not only from the Sheriff's Department, but from our side, went into this manhunt. Definitely, and they did an excellent job of going up there every single day and as long as the Sheriff was going to stay on the scene, we were going to stay mm -hmm. on the scene, but I think it's fair to say that everyone's glad this finally came and that drive through the canyon and those temperatures yeah. the sheriff talked about, it sure was an effort from them. Of course, we thank the uh, sheriffs and all the Absolutely. law enforcement that took a part in this in investigation that finally came to an end. Yeah, so we want to thank you for joining us for 23ABC In-Depth, Kern County Manhunt. From all of us here at 23ABC News, we wish you a good evening.